Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us continue our discussion on trusses. In the last class, you have seen a variety of practical structures that use trusses for supporting the loads. And we have also seen what is the origin of the word truss. We saw that it has a French connection and the meaning was collection of things put together. Now you can uh, change it as collection of essentially two force members. And we have seen that no member is continuous through a joint. Whether it is a two dimensional uh, planar truss or a three dimensional truss. In a three dimensional truss you have a ball and socket joint. And another aspect what we noticed was if you have a roof truss or if you have a bridge truss, in all of this you have set of beams which are cleverly put and transfer the load only at the joints of the truss. So what is important is in a truss no member is continuous through a joint and loads are applied only at the joints. Only then you can model the structure as a truss for analysis. What is the next stage to find out the internal forces? Why do we want to find out that? To select appropriate size, structural shape and material to withstand the forces. So your uh, analysis in engineering mechanics is only a first step in truss analysis. This information of forces will be used in the next level of course to find out the deformation and also to decide on the structural shape. In order to calculate forces in individual members, it may be desirable to determine the reactions at the supports. I have deliberately put it this way. In some problems, even without finding the reactions, you can go ahead and solving the problem. So it depends on the problem situation. In several situations, it may be desirable to start from the supports. And how do you obtain the forces in the members? There are many approaches. You have two of them, method of joints and method of sections. The idea is to solve a problem, you need to have more than one method depending on the context, select that is appropriate. I give a bird's eye view of what is method of joints in this slide. Later on, we will definitely spend time in learning the nitty gritty details. Method of joints is useful in finding forces in all the members of the truss. That may be very rare. But if you want to do that, I can use method of joints. And you have method of sections where I separate a section of the truss and then try to find out the forces on selected members. The challenge would be what is the ideal section that I have to use. And if you look at the force system in the method of sections, it is non-concurrent. So I, I can essentially use three equations of equilibrium to find out the unknowns. On the other hand, when I have a isolation of a joint, I definitely have a concurrent force system. So I can use only sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fi equal to 0, then we confine our attention to two dimensional analysis. In method of joints, you have to be very clear 
only an idealized truss is analyzed. We have seen elaborately a joint has a gusset plate, several members joined, you may have riveted connection, you may have bolted connection or you may have welded connection, but we idealize the joint to behave like a pin joint. And what do you do? Equilibrium of each joint is considered separately and consecutively to satisfy the conditions of equilibrium. So, the idea is where to start and how do you navigate through the trusses and you pass an imaginary section to isolate a single joint of the truss and I have already mentioned the force system acting on the joint is concurrent and coplanar and we have already seen I can write only two independent equations from statics. So, you have to select a joint where you have at a time only two unknown. If there are more unknown forces, there are also tricks that you can employ that we will postpone it for the time being. You make a neat sketch of this truss, the simplest truss at the same time you have uh, very interesting results for these members. You can draw a line sketch. I have the luxury of showing that as uh, members and you should identify the support conditions. On one end it is supported by a pin joint or a hinged joint and you have on the other side to allow for temperature variations supported on rollers. And you have uh, these members are at equidistance, A is the span length for each of these segments and this is also symmetrically loaded. I have 2 kilo Newton acting at this joint, I have another 2 kilo Newton acting at this joint. And we would try to find out the forces in all these members by the method of joints. And uh, first step is to draw the free body diagram, show the unknown forces and known forces. I can put the known forces first, 2 kilo Newton and 2 kilo Newton. I should replace the support at A and B as appropriate force interaction. And A is a uh, pinned joint. So, I have uh, two components because I do not know what is the direction of the force. So, I have unknown as R A X and R A Y. At D, it is a roller support. I know the direction of interaction and this is R D Y. And see that I have the reference coordinate system for the problem. Though I have a luxury to draw like this, you can simply draw as a line diagram putting these unknowns, but definitely put these circles indicating that no member is continuous through the joint. You know, you have to keep in mind truss is constructed in such a manner, no member is continuous through the joint. If a member is continuous through the joint, the member will behave like a beam and it will bend. We do not want that to happen. So, you have to recognize that this is collection of two member, two force members bound together. That is a very nice definition. And the next step is to find out the unknown forces, but before that we will also check whether the problem is solvable by using the equations of statics. So, you check for determinacy or indeterminacy, you will say how many joints are there. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 joints and members are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 members. I have unknown reaction is 3 and does it satisfy m plus r equal to 2j? It does satisfy m plus r equal to 2j. Since m plus r equal to 2j, I can 
say that this is a statically determinate problem. It is more of a training for you to get the jargon in the subject. You have to identify whether the problem is statically determinate or indeterminate. See, usually if a truss has only triangle members and one support is hinged, other support is on roller, invariably it will be a statically determinate problem. If the supports are, both the supports are uh, hinged, then you have a difficulty because I have four unknowns. And if I have cross braced members, then the number of members and number of equations will not be sufficient for you to solve, number of unknowns will be more, then it becomes statically indeterminate. So, it is better for every truss when you solve them initially, check for determinacy and indeterminacy. And I can easily find out these forces, you know if you are clever by inspection you can write the results, you have to graduate to that level because I have symmetry, I have given you the clue. I have loads only acting on the vertical direction. So, even without getting into solving this f x equal to 0 or f i equal to 0, you can clearly say what should be the force interaction at a and what should be the force interaction at b. Let us take the advantage of mathematics. So, when I say f x equal to 0, I obviously get the x component of force r a x is 0. And when I say f y equal to 0, I will have R A Y plus R D Y equal to 4 kilo newtons. And we can also find out the moment about any point, here we are finding out the moment about A. So, when I find out the moment about A, I get this as R D Y into 3 A minus 2 into 2 A minus 2 into A equal to 0, that gives me R d a as 2 kilo newtons. And I told you earlier the problem is symmetric, very simple, even by inspection after you solve several problems, you can afford to write the reactions, mentally doing all these calculations. So, I would get R a y is also 2 kilo newtons. So, I have the complete free body diagram now, the unknowns are determined and I have these as the force interaction at A and B. Now, we will have to find out the member forces by the method of joints. I can start from either joint A or D, both are equally applicable. Let me start from joint A because I know for sure that I have two members, I have two unknowns. So, I isolate the joint by an imaginary cut and I have already told you the scientific community took quite a bit of time to understand this imaginary cut, it is was not obvious and simple. Now, I have the luxury of all these animations, I can show this member cut and put it like this. And what I would do is, I would assume the forces on these members in a particular manner. I have this as uh, acting in this direction F A B away from the joint and I have also assumed on member A F force acting away from the joint. And I have told you, you do not have to worry about this. If you do the mathematics properly, the mathematics will guide you whether your assumed direction is correct or not. Okay. So, I get this as 2 plus F A F sin 45 equal to 0. From the geometry of the truss, you can find out that this angle is 45. And I have F A B plus F A F cos 45 equal to 0. So, when I solve this, I get this F A F as minus 2.83 kilo newtons. So, that indicates my assumed direction that I started is not correct, the answer is negative. 
So, I have to reverse the direction of force F A F and F A B if I look at that turns out to be 2 kilo Newtons. So, whatever the assumption on F A B is correct. So, this is about how do you handle the free body of a isolated joint. Ultimately, what we want is we want to find out whether the member is in tension or compression. So, we have to learn how to interpret these results as tension or compression on the members that requires some training and imagination fine. And let me first put uh, the correct direction of force F A F. See if I see this as a member that is cut then it is easy to comprehend that when I have force acting away from the member this could create a tension and when I have the force interaction like this this could create a compression it is very clear and simple fine. But many books what they do is they do not isolate the joint like this they isolate the pin. The moment you take it as a pin the results will be still similar, but you have to be careful and follow a discipline so that you interpret what is tension and compression because ultimate interest is to find out whether the truss member is in tension or compression. That is also required for you to visualize what will be the deformed shape. So, they just put this as a pin, pin is put as a circle and I have 2 kilo Newtons like this and I have the final force system like this. This would require further discussion, we will do that discussion. On the other hand, if I isolate it like this, assigning tension or compression is fairly simple. But you know, many of these uh, engineering practices has come from the field. There are ways in which technicians who work in the field, they have not gone through engineering mechanics course, but they will understand certain things and some notations have been used. So, it is better as engineers you also learn those notations and symbolism. So, we have already seen that F A B is in tension that is the value of 2 kilo Newtons and it is a convention in truss analysis to put these arrows on the members. Let me put the members uh, forces, I have first put the force in F A F, member A F, I have put the force in uh, member A B, I have just translated the forces away from the joint, I have put a similar one at B away from the joint and we have looked at from the logic of analyzing the free body that the member a B was in tension, but if I look at the arrows like this what is the impression you get? It appears as if it is in compression, this you have to live with it, you have to understand finally when they represent the results of truss in a diagram civil engineers do it like this. And if I look at here the member is in compression I could see very clearly in this uh, sketch and I have just translated identifying that this force is towards the joint, the same thing is put here and we have also seen when I have to analyze it by method of joints, I should go from one joint to the other in a consecutive fashion. Once you have determined the force, I have already said when there are interconnected rigid bodies, once you have determined the force in one body, you have no choice in the other body you have to put it from Newton's third law equal and opposite. You cannot assume for both separately, if you have assumed for one the other one is automatically fixed. So, when I have to solve this I have to go from one joint to another joint systematically and the reference point is I look at the joint whether the force is towards the joint or away from the joint that is the way they will look at it and you can easily see away from the joint it introduces tension, towards the joint it introduces compression. Please 
clarify your understanding on this. This you can go wrong when you are uh, sitting in a quiz and then trying to answer. Then you will start thinking when I put the arrows on the diagram, it looks compression, but SAR said it is tension. You should not start thinking there. You should right now digest the concept. Now what we will do is, we will look at what happens in a pin. We have already seen no truss has a pin jointed uh, construction except the Chennai central station has a truss. I think it should be there for the last 100 years and you have that completely on pin joint. All other trusses are, it is only idealization. But let us go back and see what was the interaction between a pin and the bar in which you have a hole where you insert the pin. Okay. Let us go back and then see. We have seen this earlier, we have put an imaginary section to cut this. And when you see the cross section at that stage, you will have a clearance between the pin and the hole. This is exaggerated, but you will always have a clearance, however small it is. And in this case, we have seen from the previous experience, there was weight which was pulling this pin down. So, you have force interaction taking place on the bottom surface. Suppose the force is acting opposite, then the pin will move up and touch this place and you will have clearance at the bottom. Just because you say body is rigid, body does not behave in a rigid manner. All bodies are deformable, which is the concept that I want to drive in your head. Okay? Because it is very important. Practical structures have only distributed forces. So, at the joint, you will have an elliptical distribution, which I would replace it by composition as a concentrated force for convenience in analysis. In reality, the boy body is deformable. You idealize it as a rigid member for you to calculate the forces. It helps. You are not making a serious error in the process. And the next level course, you consider the body as deformable and find out its resistance and decide what is the material I should use, what should be the cross section, minimum I should have so that it withstands the force and so on and so forth. So, I actually have an elliptical distribution and this is replaced by composition as a concentrated force. And I have already alerted you this interaction is dictated by how the pin is moved in the hole. Okay. So, let me take up uh, two members like this and then I have inserted the pin. Fine. Suppose I hold it like this and I, I actually push the bottom member left, then the pin will touch the bottom. Suppose I put the bottom member on the right side, the pin will touch the right side of the hole. You should understand this. So, when the member is in tension or compression, the contact what happens at the pin and the hole is different. It is not one and the same. <clears throat> so, this is what we had seen uh, that I have a distributed force on the length of the pin which is replaced by a concentrated force. Now, we would look at just take one member and I have two pins and let me take out the pins and let me first take the member is in compression. Fine. So, I could have a force interaction acting at this stage at this place and by Newton's third law, what would be the force interaction on the pin? It would be equal and opposite. I will have the force like this. And if I look at what happens in this uh, pin, I would have equal and opposite there. And you could see very clearly, if I have forces like this, the member is under 
compression and the interaction between the pin and the hole takes place at this end of the hole. Suppose I cut this member, what happens? I cut this member, I separate them and I put the interaction. Then again, I see that the member is in compression. In fact, I had isolated the joint by cutting the member. And when I cut the member, I have a place where I will put the force interaction. And what we find is the direction of the force is towards the joint. So, when I use a pin for my reference, in this case, there is no confusion. You see where the interaction takes place, you have the force when it is towards the joint, it ultimately produces compression in the member. Same is the case when I cut the member. Let us look at the other case. Suppose the member is under tension because the other members have to pull this member. So, when it pulls, where would be the force interaction? The force interaction has to happen here at the bottom of the hole. When I say the member is under tension, so I would have the force interaction. And ideally, where would the force interaction be on the pin? It has to happen only on this surface because that is what is in actual contact with this. So, that is where you will have. Now, we have a nice uh, advantage. I have principle of transmissibility. I can always move the force conveniently to the other side and I can say that this is what the interaction takes place. Why I do this? I have to do this if I do it for a pin because if I put the force on the other side, the force is towards the joint, my interpretation will collapse. Only if I say it is away from the joint, it is tension. And the convention is indicate the force at the pin on the same side of the member. That is what you have to notice. All that confusion does not come if I cut the member. But somehow many books simply put the joint as a circle and put the forces without providing a satisfactory explanation. You need to have a satisfactory explanation for you to comprehend what I am I doing. And engineering is one profession where you have several conventions. We follow conventions. If you take out conventions from engineering, engineering will collapse. Because my interpretation will be faulty if I put the force, although force interaction takes place only here physically. I do this because we want to make our life simple in drawing the sketch, simply want to put a circle. On the other hand, I isolate a joint, I have no difficulty in interpreting the force direction. In my teaching, I would isolate the joint. As I told you earlier, when you learn the subject, you should not be afraid of solving problem from any book. If some books follow this, you should also know what they do it, how to do it yourself. Let me continue this and then look at what happens in this pin and I can argue very easily that the member is under tension, you have force interaction here. Now I cut the member, separate it, when I put the force interaction that will also indicate that the member is under tension. So cutting the member is very easy to, I, 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 I mean associate the direction of the force to tension or compression. Do not confuse it while drawing the free body diagram. Free body diagram, if you get positive, negative, does, that does not indicate tension or compression. That only says the force direction you have taken originally is correct. If it is positive, 
originally what you have taken is wrong if it is negative those positive or negative are not indicators of tension or compression in the member you have to associate the force is tension when it is away from the pin a force is compression when it is towards the pin you, this you have to be very clear because when you solve a problem in tres you are expected to finally summarize your results indicating which are the members under tension which are the members under compression and which are zero force members do not neglect zero when you want to get a job you want to get many zeros after one or even five because the values are uh, the salaries are skyrocketing these days zero has no value independently but in its association it has lot of value similarly you cannot remove a zero force member from a truss the truss would collapse zero is very important you don't like your zero from your salary to be removed okay so now i have uh, indicated these forces and i have also brought to your attention when i show the force away from the joint and towards the joint i interpret this as tension i interpret this as compression and even before you do that you must also physically see when i take the member and push i mean pull it down i would obviously expect a member like ab to have tension i would like you to associate whatever the numbers you get to the physical reality don't say i have done the mathematics mathematics has given this it is tension compression don't learn the subject like that you also feel like the stress get yourself stressed okay associate tension or compression for this member is little difficult but associating tension for this member is rather easy to do now which member which joint can i go and do next if i go to b i have 1 2 and 3 unknowns if i go to f i have only 2 unknowns so i would go to joint f but when i go to joint f mind you that i have already indicated the force in member af following our convention this is under compression towards the joint is compression you have no choice of changing this you have to start with this fact and solve the other member forces don't bring in your arbitrary assumptions here so i take a isolation of joint f which i can do it nicely here and indicate the forces when i put the forces f a f i would put it like this mind you i am not putting any sign here i have already indicated the sign in my direction i just put the value this is how you have to handle the free body diagram of the joint i do not know the forces on members f f b and uh, member f e i put the force away from the joint usually you take this as a tension and if an result is negative you also can say that it is compression but that is only a chance fine your tension and compression has to be associated with reference to the joint how the force is you can also make the algebra equivalent to that but if you miss that algebra finally look at the direction of the forces so i get f f b minus f a f cos 45 equal to 0 and f f b i get this as 2 kilo newtons so this direction is correct and you can say that member f f b is in tension which also coincides with when i pull the truss down the member is pulled it is under tension it goes with your physical appreciation of the problem and i have f f e plus f a f sin 45 equal to 0 i get this as negative so my assumption is wrong so i have to reverse this direction 
and this is how the joint is in equilibrium. And now we can summarize the forces like this F, F B is 2 kilo Newton, T denotes tension and F, F E 2 kilo Newton indicates compression. From this how do we proceed next? I can go to joint B because I know what is the force here, I have only two unknowns. I can also start from joint D, I would start from joint D. Before that you know we have also indicated what is the force in the member F E like this, I put these arrows with reference to the joint, I have 2 kilo Newton acting on this and I have 2 kilo Newton acting on this member. This member is in tension, but if I look at the arrows, it gives me an impression that this is under compression, do not get confused, have a clarity on interpreting the symbolism, you are practicing symbolism here. I will go and consider the equilibrium of joint D, again I isolate this. See in fact whatever you study in trusses it is nothing but equilibrium of rigid bodies, much simpler in uh, complexity and this chapter is one everybody can score full marks, very very simple and that should be your uh, learning goals, you should not have any problem in solving a problem on truss. I isolate this joint, so when I do not know the force I put it away from the joint. So, if I use this kind of symbolism in drawing the free body, I can also associate my positive and negative value of the answer to tension and compression, choice is yours, whichever is convenient to you, you practice that. But final and foolproof interpretation is, you should refer with respect to the joint, whether it is away from the joint is tension, towards the joint it is compression. So, I write the equations R d y plus F d e sin 45 equal to 0 and F d c plus F d e cos 45 equal to 0. So, this gives me F d is minus 2.83. So, that means the member is under the compression and F c d is under tension. So, which I would indicate on the truss also. So, I have reverse the direction of force, I have to reverse the direction of force, I have reversed the direction of force and I have changed this as F d u equal to 2.83, noting well it is towards the joint. I would also indicate on the truss these forces. I have this as uh, 2 kilo Newton away from the joint, this is towards the joint. Now, what I will do is I can move to several other joints, let me go to joint E, isolate the joint and put the member forces, here I already know two forces. So, I have no choice other than putting the directions correctly. So, these two directions are known, I am putting these two directions. For the unknown directions, I put the values away from the joint for convenience. So, when I write this equilibrium equation, sigma f x equal to 0 reduces to minus f d e sin 45 plus f b e sin 45 plus f f e equal to 0. See, this is slightly inclined, imagine that this is along the length of the member. Okay. The sketch is not uh, absolutely clear on this and I get a surprising answer. I get the force in member B as 0. This is the reason why I chose this truss. I have a small truss which can be analyzed comfortably. It has members which are under tension, which are under compression and there are also members which carry no 
force. They are part and parcel of the truss. They cannot be removed. In fact, you will also see towards the end of the lecture on trusses how to identify zero force members. That makes your life simple in calculation. You cannot remove the zero force member. For stability of the truss, zero force member should exist. Just because it does not transfer any force, I cannot remove the member. That is what I meant when I say zero force members. You may say, I have designed the truss to support loads. This is not carrying any load, it is waste, I will optimize. You should not do extreme optimization. See, God is very clever. God has given you two kidneys. He has not optimized that you have only one kidney. And we see very often people have kidney problem and they donate one kidney and then uh, uh, they get that uh, kidney from others and they survive. But he has given you only one heart. Okay, He has done optimization judiciously. So, do not get into the bandwagon that I want to optimize everything and remove zero force members foolishly. Do not do that. So, I have this uh, force F c as 2 kilo Newton that is under tension and I have also marked this uh, force and I have force on member B as 0. Now, I have to go to joint B and solve the member force B c. Oh, I, I have taken the joint C. Both are equally possible. For my slide, I have taken joint C. Indicate the forces that you do not know. In an arbitrary direction, we take it away from the joint. I know the force uh, F C E. I have already determined what is F C D. I do not know what force F C B is. It is very easy to calculate F C B minus F C D equal to 0. So, I get this as 2 kilo Newton and you know very well that is away from the joint. So, this is under tension and I have also indicated it on the truss and F C B is uh, 2 kilo Newton tension and this is how the final result is normally summarized in a truss analysis. So, I have members A, B, A, F and so on and so forth and you have the values and you also have the nature of the forces whether it is tension or compression and you also have which member is under uh, zero force is marked separately. I have drawn the sketch like this. I expect you to draw the sketch like this because it is easier for you to draw a line sketch rather than putting a bar in place of a line and keep it in your mind because I have put all the forces with respect to the joint. If I see this as physically compression on the member, it is actually tension. If I see what is physically tension on the member is actually compression. This is a symbolism. And you know this stress, my student has solved it by a final element analysis because the idea is I would like you to see what would be the deformed picture. How the stress has deformed under the action of these forces and you watch the animation and the load is increased and you would observe very interesting things on the animation. First observation is you have provision of the roller is essential because this edge because of the members being elongated or contracted, it is relocated at distance away. So, your roller support should allow it to move it that way. And if you have a clear visualization, you look at this member which is a zero force member, it remains in length same, it has not altered. And you would see this member has elongated 
and this member has contracted. And you find the need for one support to be hinged, other support to be roller is very clearly brought out in this animation. And this is a real life animation. No approximations are involved other than what we have done as a pin joint. So, it understands the members as deformable which you normally do in the next level course. It is better to know how the deformed picture of the truss can be. I think in this class uh, we have seen uh, systematically what is the method of joints. We have determined the member forces. I personally feel you isolate a joint by an imaginary cut. You do not have to worry about how the joint has been made. It can be a riveted joint, it can be a bolted joint, it can even be welded and you will naturally put the force interaction on the member only on the member. There is no need that you have to put the forces on the pin when I isolate separately in the direction of in the on the side of the member all that confusion will not come. When you have a force away from the joint it is tension, when you have a force towards the joint it is compression, interpretation also becomes simpler and you isolate a joint where you have two unknowns. You also have tricks in special cases if I have more number of unknowns a limited number can be handled not all generic uh, situations. And you have to go consecutively from one joint to another. Once you have determined the forces of a member forming the other joint, you have to put the corrected force and then carry on with it. Thank you.